Hello everybody and welcome back. We've got Laura behind me, we've got Shania behind her. My name is Caroline and we are live from Wildlife Sydney Zoo right here on Darling Harbour. Now if you saw us on Wednesday, um, you would have noticed we went really big and really scary with our 4.2 metre crocodile. Today we are going cute and cuddly and we thought there is no better way to go cute and cuddly than with the cutest and the cuddliest resident that we have here at Wildlife Sydney Zoo. His name is Davey and he is a car. Now he is over here, he's showing off his little butt for us, but we've got Shania here. Before we get started with all the cute and cuddliness of Davey, we wanna show you guys some of the really cool work that our keepers are doing with our animals. Now Davey here is very, very loved by all of his keepers, but he loves us too. And sometimes he loves us maybe a little bit too much. And what that means is pretty much what he's doing now. He's seen Shania and he's like, oh, I like Shania. I'm gonna come and say hello. And I'm gonna try and get under her feet and in the way of the door opening. Um, and that is definitely not what we want. We don't want Shania tripping over him. She could hurt our precious Davy, or Davy could hurt our precious Shania. So what we do is we have trained him and you can see that now, you can see what Shania is doing. That yellow um, little ball at the end is what we call his target. And if you heard that click sound, that's what we call a bridge. And what Shania is doing is basically asking Davy to touch that little ball with his stick, with his nose, when he does it correctly, there you go, Shania clicks, and he knows that that was the right behavior and that a treat is coming. Now for Davey, his favorite treats in the whole wide world are little bits of peanut. So you can see he's pretty small. Um, he weighs about three and a half kilos. There's some of his treats there. There we go. Now, um, so this works really, really important because it helps ensure that Davey is always safe and that Shania is always safe. So now she's in the exhibit, she's gonna get ready to do some work, but Davy really likes to help. So sometimes he grabs hold of the rake, sometimes it's the dustpan and brush, just generally making Station. life a little bit harder. Station, good boy. Now, what you're watching now is something that is a little bit different. Oh, I'll add in now, guys, if you have any questions about Davy or Quokkas or any of the training that we're doing, please put them in as we go. We're going to do our best to answer as many questions as we can. But what Davy's doing now is a behavior called station training. Um, so that little green mat is what we want Davy to stand on, basically. And while he's doing that, we've got Shania over here and she's able to move his furniture around. She can tidy up a bit. And Davy very patiently waits here on his mat. Now this is really, really important, again, for safety, but it's really fun for Davy too. So he knows that this mat means awesome things are coming. The longer he spends on there, the more treats he gets. And that's really, really important. It's a great way that we train our animals. So it's called positive reinforcement and it's rewarding the right behaviors. So we don't wanna punish him for doing the wrong thing. We wanna reward him for doing the right thing. And every time that click happens, he's gone, oh sweet, I've done the right thing. I'm gonna get a little bit of peanut as well. Now, looks like we've got some questions coming through. What do they eat? So quokkas are herbivores. So they like to eat grass or leaves or browse. Um, Davy here gets lots of vegetables. They're some of his favorite. Like, now, oh, I like the mat too much. <laughs> one of the best parts about asking our animals to do things is that they get to choose whether or not they participate. And what you saw there was Davy saying, no, thank you. Now this does happen, <laughs> happens to every trainer everywhere. I don't know if it always happens when you're on a live stream, but that's okay. I think so. Lucky for us, <laughs> Davey is super cute and he makes up for it. Um, what other questions have we got here? Laura, have you got any questions for yeah, us? We've got some good questions. So we've got a lot of questions asking about how old he is. Uh, so Davey is coming up to, he's just over seven now. So he is sort of middle aged for a quokka. We've also got questions on how old they can get. So Davey, he's got the best care here at Wildlife. He should definitely go 10 years or older. So he is going to be very spoiled with us. Uh, and we have other questions about how big they can get. So I did just say he's seven years old. 
this is a fully grown quokka. We do usually have a lot of people confuse him for a baby kangaroo. Yep, he's just about the size <laughs> my of a big shoe. <laughs> Um, so he is fully grown at this size, and I do think that makes him the cutest of all the macropods. So all of those I think so ones. too. Kangaroo family, he's the cutest of them. <laughs> now I'm sure the reason we are all here is to see some cuddles with Davy. Am I right? I feel like I'm probably right. A lot of love hearts came through when I said that. So. What we're going to do now is something really cool. So this is another behavior that Davy can do, and that is entering this pouch. And you can see Shania's got it there. It's just a very fancy name for a pillowcase. And you'll see Davy, he just hops straight in. Now, the reason that he does that is because Davy was actually hand-raised. So he's seven years old now, but he wasn't... When he was very little, he was actually hand-raised by some keepers. Um, and while he was being hand raised, he would have spent a lot of time in a pouch like this. And so for him, this is a really safe place. Uh, what you guys saw earlier on the mat where Shania was rewarding him with some peanuts. Now, instead of rewarding him with peanuts, she's rewarding him with sweet belly scratches. Sweet, sweet and you can pack. see how much he loves it. There's that little quokka <laughs> smile. Teeth. Are you all dying of cuteness overload? Like we are here at Wildlife Sydney Zoo. Now, someone asked if we would teach him tricks. Now, we don't really teach our animals tricks. Um, we don't really need to. For them, for us, it's really important to teach them behaviors that help us take care of the animals. And that's exactly what we've done with Davy here. So touching the target, stepping onto the mat, um, they're all behaviors for him he has to think about and he has to work really hard to do it. And um, what he gets out of it is just the same as what he would get out of learning tricks. But we're not teaching him tricks. We're teaching him really, really important behaviours so that we can look after him a little bit better. Now, someone asked if they can climb. And they can climb. They can climb really well. Considering they are part of the kangaroo family, um, they're actually very good climbers. Now, what we call the kangaroo family, what Shania is showing off here, is his big foot. And they're from a family that is called the macropod family. And basically macropod can be broken down into two words called macro and pod. And that basically means big foot, like you can see on Davy here. Now, that means they're in the same family as all of our kangaroos and wallabies and betongs. But like Laura said, we all think quokkas are probably the cutest. <sighs> Some, yeah. <laughs> Someone asked, um, how many quokkas do we have here at Wildlife Sydney Zoo? Maybe Shania, do you want to give us the answer on that one? Yeah, so we've only got little Davy here. So he's actually part of what we call a regional breeding program. Uh, so any day now, we can actually get a phone call from the stud book coordinator to say that Davy gets a girlfriend. Until then, we're actually not allowed to house him with any old female, as we do need to be responsible within the industry and not just be breeding animals for no reason. So Davy used to live uh, in a little bachelor squad, uh, but unfortunately the boys didn't quite get along for a super a long time, so they were separated. And because Davy was so attached to some of the keepers here, uh, we kept him on with us. And as you can see, it's like he is almost asleep yep. there in Shania's arms. So. Despite, now. Yeah. <laughs> Despite the fact that he is a fully grown adult, he is very much a little baby, I think. <laughs> Definitely has a lot of keepers' hearts, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, someone asked if we cut his nails, and we don't have to do that. Um, because you can see he's got his whole exhibit here, lots of different substrates, lots of things for him to climb. And so he naturally keeps his claws nice and trim uh, by being nice and active throughout his enclosure. Now, where do they sleep and how long do they sleep? Does anyone know the answer to that? These guys are crepuscular, just like kangaroos. So they're mostly active just before the sun goes down, throughout, up, um, up and down through the night, and then into the early morning. So Davy does sleep for lots of the day, but when he hears us coming around, he likes to come up and greet us, uh, which is quite awesome. Um, but these guys are very similar to, to your normal kangaroo family. Yeah. <sighs> Likes to use his tail as a pillow. Someone did ask how he sleeps, yeah. so. Tucked up with a tail as a pillow. That's a pretty <laughs> handy thing to have. The way I'm holding him, but with his head down. <laughs> so, kind of like this. But he's like, oh, okay, so shut up. <laughs>
But these guys are really, really cool. Davey's quite famous too. He's actually been on Qantas ads. Uh, you get people coming in and asking about him all the time when we're open, uh, just to find out where he is, because he is a very, very famous, handsome little boy. <laughs> now, somebody just asked if Davey is well behaved. So I'm going to take the lead on this one because as much as we all love Davey, he's a little bit cheeky, like we said. He does love his keepers, and you're all looking at that face going, how could he do anything wrong? Well, that's it. That's exactly how he gets away with it. So he gets under our feet, he tries to help us clean, um, and when we, try, when we say he's trying to help us clean, we mean he's grabbing hold of the rake, and he's grabbing hold of the dustpan and brush, and he's hopping into our bucket, um, and just generally getting in the way and making a big old mess. So despite how cute he is, um, he is very, very cheeky. Now, uh, we just got a question about how much he weighs when they're born. And I think this might be a really good way to talk about marsupials. So, Shania, do you want to take the lead? Yeah, so with marsupials, they do actually start out almost as an embryo when they're born. So, the gestation's really, really short. Uh, it can be just over a month. It can be under a month for some species. Uh, and with these guys, when they're born, they're very, very tiny. So, for a kangaroo, it's around two centimeters. These guys, it's a little bit smaller than that. Uh, and what happens is the mum actually gives birth to this tiny little pink thing and all it has when it's born are its little paws, a nose and a sense of, uh, a sense of smell and a mouth. So once the female actually gives birth to the young, it'll actually climb up all the way uh, into the pouch by itself. So for those of you with kids out there, uh, it might not be a great thing to hear, but there's no labour. Mum just sits really, really still and the joey climbs out by themselves. You get some laugh reacts to that. <laughs> And then what happens uh, is it goes into the pouch, the little joey goes in the pouch, uh, attaches to a teat, and then it starts to drink milk. So it's very, very tiny when they're first born. Um, I've been quite lucky here at the zoo to see some of our koalas being born, uh, and they're about the size of your pinky fingernail. So just to give you a comparison, it'd be about the same size as that when you're born. Hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Shania. Now, I'm just going to pan around slightly. So if you guys haven't been to Wildlife Sydney Zoo before or recently, you will see this is our kangaroo walkabout exhibit. And while I'm holding the camera for Shania, Laura is dutifully defending me from this emu who is trying to be very annoying and steal all the attention. So guys, everyone say hello to Milo. Hi, Milo. Uh, he likes to be part of the oh, fun. <laughs> but today's not about you, Milo. Today is about Davey. There we go. <laughs> now he's had a little bit of attention. He's happy to go away. Bye, Milo. Davey's the All only right. animal at this zoo that likes a face tattoo. That is true. So we don't normally touch our animals. Um, if they don't like it, we give them the space that they need. But you can see here that that is definitely not the case for Mr. Davey. <laughs> I stop, he grabs my <laughs> now, guys, I think we're going to have to wrap it up there. I hope you have all enjoyed these sweet, sweet parts. There you go. We're all living our life vicariously through Shania right now, who's getting some amazing love from Davey. Um, so I'll quickly turn the camera around. We all want to say goodbye from Bye. Wildlife Sydney Zoo. Stay on our social channels because we have heaps more fun stuff coming up over the next couple of weeks. Um, so definitely check out our Facebook and Instagram. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much. Have a good afternoon. Hey guys, it's Shania and Laura here again. You might have seen us yesterday doing some quokka cuddles with little Davey here. Uh, we did miss a few of your questions, so we thought we'd just touch on a few to make sure everybody got uh, their questions answered. Uh, and we're here from Wildlife Sydney Zoo on Darling Harbour. All right, so to kick us off, we got this one from Kathy. She asked, how many crockers are in the wild and where can we find them in Australia? That is a fantastic question, Kathy. So in the wild, crockers are considered to be a vulnerable species with just under 20,000 of them out there in the wild. Uh, there's about 5,000 on the mainland of Australia, but you can find most of them on islands just off the coast of Western Australia, most famously Rottnest Island. Great, thank you. Um, and for you, Shania, can you tell us a little bit about where Davy sleeps and when he sleeps? So we did touch on this a little bit yesterday. For those of you that missed it, Davy loves to sleep pretty much anywhere within his enclosure. He actually does have a little sheltered area with a special little bed that we have made for him, which he does use most of the time, but he does love to make a little bed out of leaf litter or lay in some bracken fern. Uh, but he will just basically sit where he is here, put his tail between his legs and his head down, and that way he goes to sleep. Uh, and he looks like a little fluffy rock. 
the main time that he does sleep is for the hottest part of the day. Uh, a lot of animals here in Australia have had to adapt to the Australian climate, and by doing so, they save a lot of energy by sleeping for the hottest part of the day. Awesome. All right. So this one is pretty interesting. We had quite a few people ask, can you tell us, Laura, whether or not quokkas can swim? Well, it's a good question considering they are mostly found on an island and sometimes they do like to go down to the beach. There are lots of photos of quokkas on the beach, but they don't actually go into the water. However, I'm sure, just like myself, I'm not that much of a fan of swimming, but I could swim if I had to. <laughs> And uh, we can see Davy was just having a little bit of lunch there. Can you guys tell us what was in that bowl? What does Davy like to eat? So Davy is a herbivore. So a herbivore is an animal that only eats plant matter. Uh, and so here at the zoo, Davy gets a bit spoiled. Uh, daily, he gets uh, something fresh carrot, sweet potato. Today he's also getting a little bit of a superfood, kale. He eats better than I do. Uh, and he also gets some dried corn called maize. This maize is actually really good to help keep his teeth clean and it also helps us to indicate if he has any issues with his teeth. So he'd start chewing on one side more than the other and we'd be able to check that out. He also gets fresh hay and fresh grass um, and native plants as well. So we do sometimes get bottle brush or banksia, which he absolutely loves. And he'll also eat and strip the bark off these plants as well. So he has a pretty range of diet and his special treats that you guys saw yesterday were just some peanuts or and occasionally an almond as well, just for something yummy. Cool. And our last question, uh, Laura, can you tell us if Davy is related to kangaroos at all? Yes. So Davy is in the kangaroo family. The kangaroo family is called the macropod family. So macropod basically describes macro, big, and pod foot. So it's describing that big foot that all our kangaroos, wallabies, paddy melons, and Davy our quokka has. And that does mean that all of our female uh, quokkas have a pouch, just like a kangaroo, to raise their young in. And that is why when we do carry him around for whatever reason, we bring around a pouch because even though he is fully grown, he doesn't mind sometimes being treated quite specially, carried around in a pouch. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, ladies. Um, and guys, stay tuned on all of our social media channels because you'll be able to see what our next live stream is coming up. Otherwise, we're going to sign off now. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. See you later.